Rain in the rain. back and uh, we've got another fun packed episode of Armour Geekdom for you today. We've got a follow-up episode because uh, a while back you might have remembered I covered the Marvel Masterpiece 1992 series full dual Jojo Sco set uh, and now I'm going to be looking at the 93 series. It's a mixture of artists. Um, didn't I wasn't fully on board as a kid but now um, I'm loving this set. Uh, without further ado uh, let's get to it. <laughs> Okay, let's crack into it. The first one we've got here is the Hulk, uh, the Green Goliath. This is a Bill Sienkiewicz sketch. Uh, Bill, probably most known for Marvel work, New Mutants, Moon Knight, um, Electra Assassin with Frank Miller. So this is straight off the bat. We had that previous 1992 masterpiece collection that was all Joe Jusco, very kind of superhero-y style, all obviously painted, but the kind of um, the, the, the muscle-bound look. Um, big fan of those images. They look really cool, very 90s-esque for comic books. But now with this series, we're getting a departure from that. Not totally. We do get some Joe Jusco pieces in here and kind of a traditional style, but we also get a good variety of styles, which is nice to have. Here we can see the the, the kind of scratchy less detailed to an extent uh, piece of art here by Sienkiewicz. Um At the time, I know that me and Ben, who were collecting at the time, we didn't really go for this style much. But now in reflection, as we've grown up, we've matured, we've got our adult sensibilities right. You know, these this set, I think I prefer this set. And this is a great example here of, you know, look at the emotion on the Hulk's face here. You don't need to frame the whole of the figure or even the whole of what's in focus here you know the arms are out of shot but they they've 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 cropped that they framed it and it's just a really nice piece um uh great great piece here by bill uh, let's move on to the next one the human torch okay this is jim starenko um probably most notable for his marvel nick fury work um but yeah he, he did a lot of other stuff for marvel but very iconic by a very kind of stylistic artist um here we've got human torch notice how he's kind of put a yellow outline around the figure just to give him kind of like an aura or a glow there seems to be some kind of missiles being fired it looks to be above the sea there's something in the sky a bit sort of abstracty that was kind of jim style could be a shield heli carrier could be some kind of alien spaceship or something but you know you've got you've got the muscle work definition here the human torch is kind of in a dynamic pose um yeah interesting interesting piece that one let's move on to the next one the mighty thor yes this is lou harrison a cover artist for marvel and dc back in the day i don't think did too many interiors but again another dynamic pose thor throwing the hammer you've got the perspective of the hammer you know being slightly larger as it's coming towards you which is cool some nice definition and you'll find a lot of the artists in this set were fantasy highly detailed painters and that's kind of been transposed into some of these images but i like the fact that you've got the the wind and the lightning in the background gives it a bit of gravitas gives it a bit of movement and composition which is kind of nice the billowy cape so yeah yeah not a bad one that Let's move on to the next one. Iron Man by Julie Bell. Uh, Julie was a wildlife fantasy painter by trade. Um, did dabble in some superhero stuff, as we can see here. Iron Man kind of in... Is he in flight or is he running? I guess the pose, if you got rid of the background, you tilted it slightly, you could say he was, he was running. But here, obviously, because of that background, the kind of sun bursting through the clouds, it makes it look like he is in the sky. Although bit of an odd pose for him being in the sky I feel but you know it is what it is that's fine lots of 
sort of kind of gleaming nice chrome effects on the body i'm not sure what mark armor this is or whether she was just kind of going with a, a composite of previous iron man armors but yeah it's, it's, it's a nice piece okay spider-man by michael kaluta mike kaluta now mike was probably most well known for his shadow work uh, in the 70s with denny o'neill but um, he had done a few other pieces for Marvel. And his, he's got a few pieces in this line, and they're kind of a little bit abstract, which is kind of nice. And you can kind of see almost like a miniaturized Spider-Man here with spider legs creeping up from the bottom of the image just to kind of frame it and, and, and say this is the Spider-Man um, swinging on the web. Kind of in a pose, which you don't often see from Spider-Man. You get the classic of him kind of legs out front, arms up, coming towards your swinging style but this kind of downward swing don't know if i've seen this pose too often but it's cool i like it this is a nice image i like the 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 kind of lighter background kind of bringing the the other images to the fore which is kind of nice yeah good work there mr kaluta okay we've got another bill sienkiewicz one here wolverine I know that I didn't particularly like this image back in the day, but now this is fantastic. Look at this. You've got that scratchy sink of its style. Um, love the, the one eye closed, the one eye open look. He is mean. He's looking for a throwdown. Even got some blood splatters there, potentially around his waist. Kind of the glint on the claws. You know, he's cocked, ready to go, <laughs> so to speak. Um, colours fantastic here. Vibrant, popping. Really, really dig really dig this one great work there all right let's find what's next is cyclops this is the first piece in this set from joe phillips who was a, a 90s artist did probably most extended run was mr miracle for dc cyclops busting down some some door or some some building or something with his optic blast fire in the background all kinds of shenanigans breaking so yeah nice um perspective on that right leg kind of bending is very comic booky maybe not to my taste i think it's a little bit off the size discrepancy between the left and right leg but overall you know if you've got that as a trading card you're, you're not going to be disappointed next one up we're back to mike kaluta for this doctor strange piece again nice kind of abstract um, you've got these three hands all around strange uh, almost like they're his arms if you see the spots on the gloves there they're actually on his gloves he's wearing so it's kind of superimposed him over part of his gear um, he's doing some kind of spells here a bit muted on the colors i'd like to have maybe seen a little bit more vibrant pop from the greens or the reds but a, a nice piece again this is one back in the day i wouldn't have cared for but now on reflection my more um, cultured side of the chief is um is liking this stuff yeah good good uh, another Jim Sterenko piece here, I think. Uh, Namor the Submariner. Again, actually, this is, look, this is the piece above him. I wonder if that um, fits up with the Human Torch piece, uh, which was in the top right, but here we've got the top left. Interesting. So we've got Namor, yeah, busting out the sea. We've got some dolphins there leaping in the waves just to say, yes, the, he is the man of the under the waves action. But dynamic pose namor looking strong mm, yeah uh, next up we have got storm mike kaluta back again and she's kind of up in the air doing some wind powers now what are these three faces here some kind of random beasts i don't know it's i like it it's a bit weird um i like the framing aspect of the the yellow arcs of the sun almost or the moon coming down on either side yeah good image good i think he's done some good stuff here mr kaluta uh silver surfer julie bell who did that iron man she's back again with this silver surfer very similar body type with the 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 muscles and the gleam and the chrome effect from the iron man she's just kind of used that here on the silver surfer i like the fact that he's kind of whipping around on his board i like the trail on that board as well so it's not it's it almost looks like one piece um you know demonstrates a lot of movement there you've got a um planet in the background perhaps galactus is coming to feed on that because don't forget silver surfer was a former herald of galactus but yeah yeah good piece there 
Joe Jusko, who did all of the previous 1992 set, has got a Vision image here. I like this one. Vision has a lot, had a lot of colour, different colour schemes for his outfit over the years. This one here, um, I think takes a bit of getting used to, but I'm on board. I, li I like this version. I like this colour scheme. I'm not, I can't work out what's happening with his left leg. Ah, oh, I see. Now, of course, of course, he has the ability to transmorph or whatever it's called to go through solid objects. And of course, he is coming out of whatever that is, that purple thing in the background is. He's kind of coming out of that. So, okay, it makes sense now. Um, yep, another good Joe Jusko piece. Bill Sienkiewicz back again. He seems to be the man of the moment here with this set. The Ghost Rider, big close up, that burning face, um, the pennant stare. The, the, what is he? It's something about vengeance, isn't he? The, the ghost rider of vengeance or something like that. But, um, you wouldn't mess with him, would you? Rides on that big bike, leather chains, uh, leather jacket, big gold chains. But yeah, yeah. Great work. Sienkiewicz, he, you know, shows that with even a few, you, you can do more with a little is, is what I'm trying to say there. Okay. We've got George Perez up next with the thing. This is member of the fantastic four. Um, Perez, probably most well known for his Avengers, Teen Titans, Wonder Woman stuff that he did. Um, highly detailed artist, puts loads of figures onto the page. Nice big extended runs of, of work that he did. Here he's got, I'm not, I like the image of the thing. I'm not sure what's going on with the background or the other effects. I'm not sure if he's just been kind of plumped on top of that, but... It doesn't really work overly work for me, but the actual image of the thing, I like it a lot. Kind of almost feels a little bit John Romita y, but that, that's that's a good one. I like that uh, in terms of the actual image of the thing. Captain America is up next. Who have we got here? This is Starenko again, I think. Um, so again, yeah, you can see he's using that abstracty background, which which works here, and the cap is just you know looking kind of authoritative and ready for action i don't think there's anything super special about the image of cap itself but the way starenko's framed it ah i see what it is it's the i wonder if all three of these go together you know what i think they do because look on the bottom left you can see the human torches trail the bottom right you can see the water almost and this i think behind him is the eagle the 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 shield emblem the Shield Strategic Hazardous Intervention Espionage Logistics Division. If I'm not mistaken, it has had two different acronyms over the years. But yeah, I think these three go together. I'll see if I can pop up an image of these three to slot in here. But yeah, cool. Good work there, Mr. Starenko. Up next, we got uh, Archangel. So I always used to call this guy Archangel because it's A-R-C-H. Archangel. Doesn't make sense, does it? Um, anyway, this is Joe Phillips, who we saw do another one of the pieces earlier. Oh, the Cyclops one, I think he did. Prefer this one to the Cyclops. I think you can see the, the blast in the background. It's kind of cool. These incoming projectiles, uh, the concerned look on his face. Yeah, this is a good one. Um, obviously, this guy was previously the angel, and then Apocalypse had his wings cut off, put these kind of techno wings, which can fire these metal daggers and changed his skin colour to blue. I think I, I dropped off reading X-Men, but I think he went back to being the pale-skinned Warren Worthington with the feather wings. I could be mistaken. Let me know in the comments. But yeah, I like that one. That's a good one. We've got another X-Men up next. We've got the Beast, George Perez. Looks like the Beast is in the danger room here, avoiding some laser blasts, some, some explosions going off. George has kind of used almost a... Uh, well, he's, I think they're all painted, all these images, but a uh, painted star, which I haven't really seen from him before because of his mainly an interior artist. But yeah, I, I kind of like what he's done here. I kind of like the contortions that the beast is in to get dodge of the, all those lasers. That's kind of cool. And you've got the big X in the background. Um, up next, we've got uh, everyone's favourite time travelling techno organic virus wielding dude who likes big guns and pouches. That's Cable, of course. And uh, this is done by. Uh, I think this is Dan Brereton, who did a bit of work on some Batman stuff um, and then did his own series called Nocturnals for Malibu and Image back in the 90s, but had this kind of very, very uh, recognisable painted style. Uh, I really like this image, the Grimace from Cable, the, the big gun firing 
Um, yeah, this is a good one. This is a good one. I like that. Okay, up next, Joe just goes back with a carnage. Cletus Cassidy. Um, I remember I bought these comics and read these Spider-Man ones back in the day when I say that I don't like Spider-Man comics and I have tried it over the years. I think when I first started getting comics in the early 90s, Spider-Man was kind of, you know, on vogue. There was the, um, what was that saga? The Clone Saga was ongoing. Um, Cletus Cassidy, I guess, had sprung out of Carnage, had sprung out of the popularity of Venom. But yeah, this one kind of a lot going on here with all the tendrils coming off him i think he's managed to capture the maniacalness of carnage i like that they're all going off in different directions i like the green um, background color that works well that's pretty cool up next we have got hulk 2099 by dave dorman um, dave probably most well known for his cover work painted style especially on the dark horse star wars comics from back in the day dark empire and all those ones fantastic star wars pieces this man has done but here's some of you asking hulk 2099 what the deuce is that chief well in the 90s marvel had this offshoot line of comics which formed the 2099 universe which was supposedly 100 years 100 and whatever five years in the future this is what marvel universe would look like they had spider-man doom x-men hulk Ghost Rider, Fantastic Four, they launched all these series. Not many of them lasted that long. I think the longest were probably Doom, which ran about 44 issues, something like that, and then Spider-Man, something similar. I had all of the 2099 comics, literally all of them, because I was going to do a custom comic bind, which I will be doing a Armour Geeked an episode on coming up soon, where you basically take your comics, you cut out all the adverts, or if you want to, cut the back covers off, arrange them in whatever order you want, send them off to the book binder, bindery, they send them back, you get nice lovely covers, index pages, it's basically making your own hardback uh, comic collection, instead of buying the trades and graphic novels, which are great, but they might not have the comics in the right order, they might not have everything you want, you got, you got full license to make your own unique binds, um, you might have seen them if you've been watching or a fan of the talking joe podcast that i used to co-host with my buddy funky bunch mark seddon he's done some youtube videos go and check out the talking view talking joe uh, videos that he's done about where he shows some of his binds um links down below but yeah i had all these i ended up selling them all because i just couldn't get into the line or just didn't have time i did keep the spider-man and doom but anyway listen this guy hulk let's talk about why we're here this particular card i like what they've done here they've created a hulk for the future who's quite similar but different so you've got the green and the purple pants but they've made this guy ferocious i mean look they've given him kind of some hairy hunched over back these big giant claws the snarling mouth um interesting interesting character design there so let's you know there's some other characters from that line we're going to discuss in this set but let's move on to the next one dr doom by glenn fabry glenn it was an artist on Slain for 2000 AD, written by Pat Mills, which is kind of like um, an Irish version of Conan the Barbarian, but better. Uh, then probably you'd seen his work on as a cover artist on Preacher and Hellblazer for Vertigo. But yeah, here he's done a great close-up of the good doctor. And what he's done is you don't often see, you get to, you, you're able to do this with the painted style is okay fine he might be disfigured under but what he's done is he kind of rusted and browned up the actual head the, the the mask which is kind of cool because normally you just see this bright shining chrome mask but here he's really dirtied it up and, and made it a bit grimy so um a bit fat in the face maybe but uh, i like that shot that's, that's a good one uh, one of my favourite characters here is Daredevil. Uh, this is Tristan Shane, who I wasn't really that familiar with. Did a bit of work for Marvel and DC, but then kind of moved into general illustration. But he's got a few images in this set. Um, classic Daredevil pose here, leaping over a building, away from an explosion. The only thing I don't particularly like is that left leg. It looks where he's the perspective of it being truncated because it's literally facing right into your viewfinder. It looks a little bit weird, a little bit kind of warpy, but um, you know that's that's fine. It's, 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 it's a good it's a good image overall. Joe just goes back with another one of my favourite Marvel characters, Iron Fist. He has got uh, he can form his th fist unto a thing of iron, but the the power of the dragon of is it uh what's the what's with this mystical city of kun lao i think it is um but anyway this is his classic look from the 70s with the big collar the big um braid the big bit of cloth coming off of his head mask the the, the yellow and green outfit 
good image. Grimmest, poised, ready for action. Um, you know what you're going to get from Joe Jusco. A fantastic image. So that's pretty cool. Psylocke up next. Julie Bell, who we've seen earlier. This is Psylocke. I don't. The pose, not too sure about. It just looks a bit weird and staged for what it is. Um, she's fighting something in the foreground. I don't know if they're arms or could be the brood. Something like that. X-Men villain. She's in some sort of dark cavern or cave. Um, good movement on the psychic blade. But, um, uh, yeah, not not too sure on the pose on that one. Michael Morbius, the living vampire. This is Brian Stelfreeze, who's got uh, several upcoming images in this set. Uh, he worked for all the major companies, did a fair bit of work on Batman, and recently uh, reinvigorated Black Panther. Um, and I think I don't know if he's still drawing that. I don't think he is. I think he drew some of the original runs of that a few years ago. But um, good artist. Met the guy. Really nice guy. Met him at a comic convention. So Michael Morbius, the living vampire. He's always trying to find a cure for his own vampirism. Don't know what he's doing here. He's just hanging out by a girder and a wall and a couple of... The, I think they're statues rather than monks or guys, hooded people. But um, yeah, like the shadow on this. Uh, really good use of shadow on that image. The Punisher, this is by Mike Zeck. Uh, Mike Zeck um, did famously a lot of work on Captain America, the original Secret Wars, Punisher, and I think he drew Craven's Last Hunt as well, the Amazing Spider-Man book. Could be mistaken, but I think he did. Um, this is probably not one of my favourite Mike Zeck pieces, but it tells you what you need to know. Punisher shooting guns. I think the guns are just... They've lost their 3D-ness because he has them literally 100% straight on. A little bit of angle on those guns would have been nice. I think that would have improved my love of this piece by quite a lot. Up next, we've got Rogue. This is another Brian Stelfreeze image. I like this one a lot. Rogue in her that, that classic costume with the brown bomber jacket, hair back. And I like the fact that the image is framed with her flying with someone's got some heads up display on her and they are targeting, ready to fire, although that doesn't really fit with the image of her smiling. Although it could be a friend, it could be Iron Man or something like that. Although it does say target. But I like that one, that's good. Okay, my favourite guy so far on this is back again. It's Mr. Bill Sienkiewicz with a saber tooth. He did the Wolverine, now he's got the saber tooth arch nemesis. Look at the snarl and just the hair, the facial hair is just, just off the page. I mean, that is probably not accurate, but I don't care. I love this look. This guy is, the, oh, look at the size of the eyebrows again. You know, it might not be realistic, but this is a fantastic image. He's given him stubble, he's given him the five o'clock shadow. He's in costume as well, because I think I can see the outline of the mask, but um, great work, great work there from Mr. Sienkiewicz. Uh, who's this? This is Forge, as done by Joe Jusko. A bit of a plain Jane image, this one, not much going on. We can see the blackbird in the background, a few crates, which he seems to be standing on for some reason. Um, Forge, the maker, so he can pretty much make anything he wants. So mm, there, there you go. Uh, I'm going to move on. It's, it's, it's okay, I do like the character Forge. But I just think the image is a little bit uninspired. She-Hulk is up next. It's Mr. Just Go again. Back to Banks. Um, she is just kind of in some rubble after a big fight scene. I feel like, again, this image has been superimposed onto a background, which didn't really make sense. Looks like Ultron is in the background there, top left. Actually, yeah, there's an Ultron head directly to the left. Ultron parts. Maybe she's just smashed up a bunch of Ultrons. Uh, and she said, hey, check me out. Look what I did. Okay. Uh, next up we have Gambit and this is from Joe Phillips this is each time I see his images I think they get better and better so here we've got Gambit looks like to be fighting some sentinels some sort of power blast in the foreground down, the, down low I like his use of colors across all his images the Cyclops um, whatever the other one he did was the Archangel and now this Gambit nice use of colors here um, really like that image actually that, that that'd be quite cool sort of blown up as a print I like that one uh, Cap uh, not Captain America at all, is it? It's US agent who took on the role of Captain America when Captain America quit. And then when he came back, he went off on his own as US agent. I think a bit more hardline than the good Steve Rogers. This is done by Frank Springs, who I know nothing about. I did a quick Google, but pretty much the search came up empty. So don't know about this man, but I like this image. It's, it's, it's a bit... It's a bit kind of abstract, but I like what he's done there. I like the background. He hasn't drawn the full flag. He's just done a, a, a zoomed in close up. Um, 
but of of you know red and white stripes with cap blasting you know deflecting a blast but yeah i, I like that one that's okay that's cool spider woman this is tristan shane and i like this one he's as we saw the spider-man one by mike kaluta earlier again with this one tristan's decided to put a spider in the image and this is a cool one um what is her name what is spider woman's name jen jen someone can't think for the life of me jessica drew jessica drew there you go got it in the end uh yeah so i don't know what her connection to spider-man is i think it is zero i don't think i've ever read a comic with her in i maybe might have read some new avengers uh, back in the day from brian michael bendis but um yeah i like that image that's, that's pretty cool okay this guy i used to call strifey but i am 99.9 percent .9 sure it's strife this is Cable's clone brother. There was a big saga called The Executioner's Song that crossed over in the 90s, all the X-Books. And the, the conclusion or part of the, the tease was that is this is Cable actually Strife and he's actually a bad guy. And it turned out, no, it was his clone brother. So Joe Jusco here on art. Good image. I like the, the again, I keep using the word maniacal, but that, that face, he is up to no good. The big cloak is all around this guy. So I'm going to go back and read that um, that storyline, actually, the Executioner's Song. Probably doesn't hold up, but I like the art on it. Uh, I'm going to give it a go. Give it a go. I'll let you know what I think. Thanos from Ray Largo. Um, not sure Ray Largo. Don't Didn't recognise the name. Uh, don't know what he's done. But I like with these imposing guys having this upshot where you can get a bit more perspective on how big these guys are look look at the smile the smirk he is gonna literally crush you or blink you out of existence um pretty cool uh, up next we got blade by tom palmer probably most well known as being an inca for marvel for like 50 years or something like that um did a 12 year stint on avengers uh, as an inca but um a, a, quite a, a well-regarded penciler as well from what lily's done blade i like this character this guy is a vampire hunter you know he's, he's half vampire himself coming out of the fog and the mist i like that red moon in the background or the, the red sun setting whatever it's probably the red blood moon but you know quite a detailed image here i like that one he's, he's done a good job there he's done, done a good job adam warlock this is ray largo again uh, again another good piece he did the thanos and adam warlock has butted heads with thanos on many occasions in the comics great design on this character i need to read more i have the dan abnett guardians of the galaxy run and all those books which i'm actually going to do a, a custom no I, I was going to do i've done a custom bind on but i need to go back and reread that so that will probably be a comics catch-up i'll do might do an episode of uh, i'm a geek on that but wait a minute i'm looking at the cane and on the head that looks like a thangarian head which i think is hawkman he's from thanagar i think and that looks like that that's as he slipped that in and it's got past editorial not sure but great colors on that good image well done that man colossus this is looks like a julie bell image uh again well basically if you've got big muscles and chrome and gleaming you're probably sure it's julie bell probably my favorite ones that she's done here colossus busting through a wall stuff flying everywhere i like the light pouring in through the background um that's a good one i like that next up we've got a man who is more well known as an inker and now as a writer it's jimmy palmiotti he inked joe quesada for a long long time then he became uh, a well-regarded writer but here in, you know show's got pencil in chops magneto headshot love it i like the fact that he hasn't drawn the edges of the helmet it's just kind of gone off into space almost um yeah that, that's a good one actually um was hadn't seen a lot of his penciled work before or painted work before but that's a good one okay bill sienkovic the vulture what a great image what a great image this guy's an old dude look how slender and lithe he's drawn the body um just tapering off at the feet again we don't need to see the whole image the wings going off the top and the side uh the the sun pe look at the sun it's actually peering through the cloud through that wing really cool couple of birds in the background great image i mean this man is is fantastic really really like what he's doing there okay we've got another 2099 character here spider-man 2099 miguel o'hara or miguel o'hara joe jusco great character i'm going to give this series a reread love that costume design it's one of my favorite modern costume designs of any 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 comic character really cool um got the kind of it's the day of the dead 
costume for, which is the origin of where he gets it from but um love that the pose he's in i love the 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 angle of the wall and the angle of the position the composition here with the big towers in the background you see that's the alchemex towers i think but great image there another one joe's back with another 2099 character this is the punisher not sure on this redesign it's oh he's shooting lasers obviously he's in the future um i don't think i ever read this particular series um yeah what's those big white battens at the top of his unit in the front of his uniform they're not sure but um it's okay it's actually it's growing on me a little bit the design if you just go with the wacky zany futuristic thing i however i do much prefer this guy which is doom 2099 fantastic series definitely going to reread this a great costume update i love the fact they switched out the green for blue joe just go back again here look at this lightning bouncing off his chest this is probably my favorite joe image from this series oh i'm hungry to read that book really want to get back into it ravage 2099 joe just go again this was a much maligned series written by stan the man lee of all people i think he probably hadn't written a good book in 25 years but he came back wrote this it got panned by critics but I don't know much about the character he looks kind of vigilante -ish. he looks more sort of punisher than punisher did um don't know much about it but you know the image is is okay if you know who the character is i don't so it loses a bit of gravitas with me we talked about carnage we talked briefly about venom now here is venom it's dave dorman and he has made this dude scary as all get out it's almost alien-esque i think in what he's done here with the the wide mouth the big um teeth they're almost fang like like those aliens the slobber and the big tongue um yeah it's, it's, it's a it's a good does what it's supposed to do well done joe just go back I, I said that other one was my favorite but this could be my favorite joe one domino big fan of this character she has got lady luck as her one of her powers things go right for her um she's a great character design i think she was a rob liefeld design from the new mutants back in the 90s with cable and all those guys um she's cool she's cool that's a good good image as well there we've got a nihilus up next glenn fabry um he did that great dr doom and look at this one he's done here one of the fantastic four villains from the negative zone and really like what's going on here i would have liked a little bit more color i think it's a bit muted but great pose uh, great image from glenn there the rhino this is cool man this has got a touch of kind of comedy-esque to it but like the image here smashing through the wall bricks coming flying this is brett blevins who had an extended run on new mutants uh, a book called sleepwalker in the 90s and shadow of the bat for dc but this is a cool this is a cool one man not too many colors but you don't need them uh, I, I really like that image that's, that's cool it's kind of passed me by that one previously puma or puma if you're in the uk this don't know much about this guy i think he's a spider-man i don't want to say villain i think he's an anti-hero possibly i think he got his power from some kind of mystical amulet maybe jumping down from the rooftops um yeah not, not much more to say about this one this is by joe phillips he's he's knocking him out the park joe phillips on this set i'll tell you um but yeah that's that's it's a cool it's a cool image actually i, I like that one cannonball talked about him a second ago actually joe just go this is sam guthrie the farm boy from somewhere in the i don't know where he's from midwest usa uh blasting i like what they've done here blurred the background so to give us um, a bit of focus on the foreground of our man blasting forward yeah it's, it's a good image no, nothing spectacular but you know does what you want cannonball to do polaris by dan lawless um bit part um artist for marvel over the years don't really know much of his stuff now polaris is she again i fell out of the x-men scene for a bit is she magneto's daughter i think she might be not sure not sure i'm just gonna actually um no i'm not gonna look that up i'll look it up later or you can tell me in the comments but yeah this is this is okay i think it's one of the weaker ones in the set uh, i think this is dan's only only piece in here you might have another one but it might be his only one um yeah she was part of x factor for a while and also x-men speaking of x-men we've got long shot he is kind of x-men um adjacent he comes from mojo world i think you actually see mojo there in in the bottom his power is 
His power's luck as well, I think. So is it the same as Domino? Don't know how their powers differ. I'll look it up. If you know how their powers differ, let me know. Looks like he's chucking some knives here. But I always kind of like this character. He he popped up in some of those Jim Lee, Chris Claremont X-Men issues back in the 90s. So I'm going to go back, reread them, and uh, dig into that character a bit more. Cyber. This guy, don't know anything about this guy other than I think he's a Wolverine villain. Might have been in the Larry Hammer, uh, Mark Silvestri or Adam Kubert period of Wolverine in the 90s. Looks pretty mean. I think he's some kind of cyborg dude. And yeah, who's this? This is uh, Joe Jusco again. Okay, Omega Red. This is, oh, Brett Blevins did that rhino. Now he's got a cracking Omega Red here. Love this one. Good, great choice of colours um, for the backgrounds he's using. This is a X-Men villain. Uh, what's his name? Don't know. He's some sort of Russian dude who's got these death coils and a death spore. And... Um, this was during a phase, I think, where they were pumping out a lot of Wolverine villains. So you had that Cyber, you had Sabretooth, you had this dude. Um, although this guy is an X-Men villain, I think. But great image there. Deadpool. This is just at the period before oversaturation of Deadpool. Probably by about five or ten years before oversaturation. The Mercenary with a Mouth, the Merc with a Mouth, created by Rob Liefeld. And yeah, look, he's got... A sword and a gun, blood splatters, Joe Jusco. Not sure what that big green... Oh, it's a target, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. There's miles better Deadpool images out there if you want them. Here we have the Kingpin by the legend that is John Romita. Um, if you don't know John Romita, go check out his work. Worked in the 50s and 60s for DC on romance comics. Then landed the gig on Amazing Spider-Man opposite stan lee for you know i don't know how many he did 60 80 issues of Spy amazing spider-man maybe but kind of redefined that character and kingpin was actually everyone thinks he's a dead or villain he actually started off started out life in spider-man i think uh, unless i've got that wrong but yeah smashing the table he's got his cane um good good stuff there from mr ramita Bishop, one of my faves from the X-Men. Actually, one of my faves all, all, all time. This is from Brian Stelfreeze. I can tell by the signature. Um, yeah, he's got his 90s, 90s mullet, permed mullet, which is classic. Uh, I think I might go for that. If you think Chief should get a permed mullet, let me know. I'll put it to a vote. Um, I might get that done. Yeah, gun wheeled in. He's got some sort of energy absorption, then energy dispersal power. Uh, X in the background, good stuff. The Absorbing Man... Carl Kreela? Mm, could have got that wrong. I uh, don't know. But this dude can absorb... Yeah, I don't actually know what his powers are. He doesn't absorb powers. He absorbs stuff. So I guess, look, he's absorbing concrete or granite up through his arm. Um, not sure. Dave Dorman on duties here, busting through a wall. We've seen better ones of characters busting through a wall, I think. Potentially the Cyclops, maybe the Rhino one. But um, yeah, that's, that's okay. It's a good, good painted image. Dark Hawk, 90s character, uh, some sort of kid who discovers this amulet and becomes a Dark Hawk. Don't know much more than that about the character, didn't read the book. He might join the New Warriors team, but who's on this? This is Ken, Ken Stacy or Stacy. Not too sure, I think he did a few little bits for Marvel, but this is quite a cool one actually. Um, I like the colour scheme, I like the reflections and the shadows. Um, yeah, that, that's actually quite a nice image. I might check out some Dark Hall books. If I should check some out, um, let me know. Brian Stelfreeze, Mystique. She is a shapeshifter. Um, always thought it was a weird look for her. Blue skin and that kind of skull thing on her forehead. They didn't stick that on Jennifer um, Lawrence in the movies. But um, yeah, sitting on the rocks. Weird faces in the background. Abomination, Joe Phillips. I'm not saying Joe Phillips is the abomination. I'm saying he drew this one. Hulk villain, gamma irradiated, Emil Blonsky. Kind of cerebral um, villain. So he was a good match for the Hulk. Kind of down in the sewers, just doing his thing, I guess. The Wasp. This is by, I thought it was Dan Brereton. It's not. I see the signature there. It's, um, who is that? That is, don't know, Estes. John Estes? Don't know. Um, but anyway, we've got the Wasp here in one of her guises. I think this might be the Avengers 90s outfit. Down among the plants and the insects. Proportions go a bit weird on her lower legs. But yeah, it's, it's fine. It's fine. 
Okay, we've got Spider-Man villain up here. We've got The Scorpion by Brett Blevins. Really like what he's doing with these images. Um, again, he's using only a few colours, great perspectives. Don't know much. Mac Gargan, I think this guy's name is, although there's been a few Scorpions over the years. Um, just good rogues gallery, I think, Spider-Man. Captain Britain, Joe Phillips. He's busting through a wall. We've got the Union Jack in the background. Brian Braddock, this guy. I think his sister is, well, I know his sister is Betsy Braddock, otherwise known as Psylocke. Interesting fun fact for those who don't know. Uh, next up, we've got the Black Knight. This is another Tom Palmer. He's kind of using a similar pose that he used on Blade, but this is a good one. Really like this. like that, um, the meeting of the the red and the, the black clouds. Nice trails coming off of the, the laser sword. I'm not sure I, I dig the Black Knight too much. Dane someone. Dane Whit, Whitmore or Whit something. Not sure. But cool image. Uh, I'll give him that. Sasquatch by Brian Stelfree is part of Alpha Flight, which was a Canadian super team. Uh, Sasquatch was kind of their answer, I guess, to the Hulk. He was Walter Langowski. He, I think he, he, he is gamma radiated as well. And he, scientist, he retained his intellect. He could turn back and forth at will into the Sasquatch. Um, probably not my favourite one of Brian's from this set. Face looks a little bit funky. Um, lifting up that, that car or whatever. Uh, who else we got next? We have got the Black Widow. And this is, who's doing this one? Joe Chiodo who I think mainly did stuff for Wildstorm and Top Cow, the image imprints back in the 90s. Um, this is the classic grey, he's, he's kind of getting a bit of a darker grey uniform, um, short red hair, the, the bracelets, the stingers. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an okay image. Uh, next up we got Typhoid Mary, Brett Blevins. Great one. Um, I said previously on other episodes, I'm not over keen on the over-sexualised stuff. However, if it fits with the character, I uh, I think that's okay. And, and this kind of does fit with Typhoid's character. She had a r couple of really good runs in Daredevil books, in um, Frank Miller and then Brian Michael Bendis. But I she may well be... No, she is, yeah. she, she uh, Frank Miller and John Romita Jr., I think, was the run where Typhoid Mary came in. Split personality, really cool character. And then she, she was in some Spider-Man books as well. But... Um, good image that we've got joe just go back with a war machine image do like war machine um roadie jim rhodes um just some good splatter effects here good blast effects good good image uh, i like the one that's, that's a lot um not much to talk about there just like that character now onto a character that i don't particularly like this outfit matt fraction and david aha did reinvent this character and it's a great run but this this one here, this outfit, um, yeah, the Bowman, I'm not overly down with it. It's, it's the outfit, I'm talking about the image uh, by Ray Largo is actually pretty cool. I like what he's done there, I like the framing. That's a, that's a cool image. We've got Deathlock up next. This is Dan Brereton again, I think. And Deathlock's a cool character. He's man. He's one of these dudes where he's part man, part machine. They, it, was a, it was a project that... Uh, got defunded or whatever left for dead but then he went rogue and he's a cool he's a cool character i need to read some more deathlock i had a, a couple of deathlock series which i need to go back and reread but um good image that i like that one nightcrawler back to some x-men action this is kent williams who worked with john j muth on a havoc wolverine meltdown mini series back in the day and i think this is the guy who adapted um darren aronofsky's fountain movie that movie i haven't seen it uh, i think it's the one with um what's the dude uh who's in it um the dude who plays wolverine the australian dude oh i can't think of his name now hugh jackman i think he he was in the fountain uh, and i think this guy kent williams adapted the movie to the comic but anyway here's his nightcrawler i like it a bit kind of sketchy bit kind of um disproportion to a degree um yeah i, I like that that's, that's a good one uh, now we've got Thunderstrike by Joe Jusco. This is there's obviously been a trend in comics where one guy either dies or goes away, another someone else comes and takes up the mantle. And this is Eric Masterson who tried to become Thor and then became this character called Thunderstrike. Haven't really read any of the comics, but 
I like the I like the beard. I like the long ponytail. I like the very nineties jacket. Look at that. But that's a cool image with the lightning kicking off in the background. Okay, we've got a character called Vengeance here by Tristan Shane. Um, don't know anything about this guy other than he is a Ghost Rider villain. Looks Ghost Rider esque, doesn't he? I think he's even got a bike there, um, some spikes. It's it's not a bad image. Uh, if I knew more about the character, I'd probably appreciate it more. Gene Gray from the X Men, uh, who did this. This is Carl Potts, who did some work for Marvel. I think maybe in the sixties or seventies, and then became an editor there, more prominently as an editor. But it looks like the shadows are closing in on poor old Gene. Um, hope she gets out of that one in time. Okay, we've got a Shatter Star here from Lou Harrison. This is, uh, I used to love this character from X-Force. Look at that, he has a sword with two blades coming out of the same hilt. I mean, fantastic 90s stuff, that is. He was part of X-Force with all those other crew, uh, formerly the New Mutants, but he came from a faraway world. Was he part of the Mojoverse? I'm not sure, actually. Um, but he, he was a warrior, he had to fight for his survival. Um, doesn't know anything else other than fighting. Okay, Joe Phillips. You know, he's, he's I think, Joe Phillips, Brett Blevins and Bill Sienkiewicz are my three faves from this series. But here he's done a Beta Ray Bill, one, another one of my favourite characters. Go out and read the Ballad of Beta Ray Bill. It's from Thor 37, 337 up to 339, possibly, three issues, um, by Walt Simonson, writing and penciling. This is where Beta Ray Bill is a alien who's trying to protect his people. They've gone in, he's put them in a coma. Or they're in suspended animation, I should say. He's looking for a cure. Stumble across Thor, stumbles across Thor. They have a big fight. He is deemed worthy and um, lifts the hammer, Yolnir. Uh, but then there's Odin and um, Thor and Bill have a big talk. And then it's, okay, Thor can have his hammer back. But then Odin crafts Stormbringer, the hammer for Beta Ray Bill. And he goes off to do his Thor-like stuff across the galaxy. But... Great design on this guy. The horse face is quality. Um, you know, good image, good image. Well done. Next up, we got a new warrior, and this is Night Thrasher. This looks like Brett Blevins, and yeah, um, good character. I have read some of the new warrior stuff, but I need to read some more. Dwayne, I think his name's Dwayne, someone possibly could have got that wrong. Um, in fact, I can look it up on the back of this card, can't I? I forgot you got the backs of the cards um Dwayne Taylor Dwayne Taylor yeah um not my favorite one of, of Brett's but you know Night Thrasher he's out at night the moon's out so yeah fine let's do it the Red Skull Captain America villain by Mike Zek smoking the cigarette with the filter nice you've got the Luger um you don't often see him in this outfit, kind of a, a suit, shirt and tie with the jacket. I kind of like it. I like it. Good look. Nice yellowing on the eyes there. Lilith by Kent Williams, who we saw earlier on Nightcrawler. She is, I want to say Doctor Strange or Ghost Rider, but she's around that supernatural kind of um, group, a, a genre of uh, circle she treads in. But she looks pretty badass. Um, she's wielding some kind of fire fist like the muted colors he's used here kind of earthy colors that's, that's good work uh, he's back again actually Kent Williams with the Falcon love the Falcon he stepped in to uh, help out with Captain America a lot back in the day this is his old classic outfit um, good colors again you know you've got these these earthy muted colors but then you've got this pastely red which kind of does a good job good work Hercules, like Hercules a lot. This is by Ray Largo. However, this is the 90s outfit that was used in that 90s Avengers run, which, uh, what are you doing? Why are you changing? Why are you shaving his tash, man? Why are you giving him this outfit? That said, the image is cool. He looks like he's busted down a statue of his papa, Bear Zeus, because he is not happy with him. But great image. Shame about the costume. Uh, next up, we have got Nova. This is by Ray Largo again. Nova, part of the Nova Corps. Corps or Corps? I'm never really sure how you're supposed to pronounce that word. C-O-R-P-S. But also a new warrior. And yeah, 
blasting off. No, not sure I like this trail effect from him. Um, good cityscape image though, but mm, there you go. We've got Joe Phillips back with Havoc image. This is a cool one. Cyclops' brother. He has got some kind of powers. Don't know what powers he's got, but you know he's using them right there. Love the hair sweeping out. I love the 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 kind of concentric circles in the background. Good one. Great image that. Phoenix by Lou Harrison. This is not to be confused with Jean Grey. This is Rachel Summers. I forgot her first name on that last episode of the 1992 series. It's Rachel Summers. She is. I still don't know what her background is. She's some kind of, kind of long lost possible daughter of Jean and Scott. But this is a cool one. This is the Phoenix in the background. This is popping with colours, just even though the, the colour palette is minimal. Um, that's a good one. That's a, I like that one. Brett Blevins with Crystal. She is an inhuman living on the blue area of the moon, if you haven't heard of it. I think she married Quicksilver, had a kid called Luna. Also hung around with Johnny uh, Storm, the Human Torch. She has got elemental powers and are wearing a 90s jacket, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, good, good image. I like the spray and the windswept hair. Drax the Destroyer, Lou Harrison, he is flying through space, he is busting down asteroids. This is kind of pre the Guardians of the Galaxy Dra Drax incarnation, where this guy is pretty dumb, he's strong but dumb. Um, yeah. Terax, cool image here, man. He looks like a bit of a rip-off between Thanos and Darkseid and all those other kind of guys. This is Glenn Fabry, by the way, on art, great job. He was a former Herald of Galactus as well, finding, seeking and finding out worlds for Galactus to ravage. Bad guy, Silver Surfer, Nemesis. Good, good image. I like that one. The Vulture 2099. Don't know anything about this guy. Spider-Man villain, I guess. Um, I like this kind of targeting thing down this left-hand side. This is Kent Williams on art here. So someone's got a heads-up display on him. That looks cool. That's a good image. That's a good image. Um... We have the checklist here. If you want to see the checklist, there it is. It's double-sided. It's uh, it's foiled. It's nice coloured. And it does suggest down the bottom that there are eight more cards. These are X-Men 2099 Diner Etch cards. Now, what the hell are Diner Etch? No idea, but I'm going to show them to you. Here they are. I have this set. These are... It always used to be about the, the kind of foils back in the day of collecting. Um, we, we used to have in the UK the sticker albums, Panini football sticker albums or soccer to you guys over in the States. And it'd be like five or 600 um, stickers to collect. And the team badges for each, each of the teams was like a shiny. We used to call it shiny and um, a foil one. And the swaps in the playground would be like 10 regulars for one shiny. And over here in the world of trading cards, you know, the foils or the, the specials. Or well, the chase cards, I think they're called as well. But anyway, let's get to them. So here we got uh, these are Diner Etch, whatever that means. So Mean, I don't know any of these characters. So all I'm going to talk about is the image. Mean Streak, he looks like some dude who's running fast. And these are all done by someone called Bob Larkin, who I think was like a Marvel cover artist for Marvel magazines and stuff rather than comics. Don't really know his work at all, but he did all the eight of these. And uh, next up, we got Cerebra. And she's got some kind of mind powers going on there. Um, yeah, they're all kind of, she's kind of etched in a surrounded by a gold trim. Next up, we got uh, Crystalline. Um, yeah, don't really care too much for that one. I'm gonna move on. Uh, Metalhead is he a villain or a hero? Not sure. He will tell me on the back, but I can't be bothered to flip over. Uh, nice one. I've moved these in the light. They do, they do, they are cool, man. Chase cards are cool, but um, this dude looks very 90s. He's got a, kind of like a kind of a bomber jacket on with his long silver gold hair, a uh, silver white hair. Next up, we've got Serpentina. She's got some kind of snake like oh, Mr. Fantastic powers. Look, that's her arm bending around the pole. She is alluring you in. Uh, watch out for her. Bloodhawk, some kind of demon creature with wings and massive claws this is probably the best image so far from these ones flying out over the cityscape you know that's kind of cool actually i think to a degree the chase uh, foil stuff might hinder some of these images to be honest but anyway skull fire 
looks like looks like havoc doesn't he with it almost got the havoc powers um white face he looks kind of cool interesting last up we got how would you pronounce that x i apostrophe a n zian jian but uh, actually this dude looks the best this is the best image yeah he's got sand powers i kind of like the the get up he's in i like the color scheme here the sand drifting through his hands um this dude looks pretty cool um but yeah and there you go there you have it that is the marvel masterpiece 1993 collection all the cards with the special ones i hope you enjoyed it um let's hand you back to the chief which is actually me but me you can see me now here i am oh nelly that was a great show um that was a great look at that set that marvel masterpiece 1993 um that's a grower that one uh, as i said when i was a kid maybe not quite fully on board with all those different art styles but now holy tortilla chips that was the stuff i've got more trading cards uh, in the locker over there in the chief dog casket and i've got some more masterpiece i've got marvel universe i've got some dc stuff i've got um some other comic stuff i've got star wars galaxy we've got a whole range of stuff we're gonna go through those over time maybe get some guests in to talk about them as well that'd be quite cool but uh thanks for checking out the show this week if you're in a position to you know do the subscribe and the like and the notifications all that jazz i uh, appreciate your help if you've already done it i appreciate it even more and uh, we'll continue to put out the good work here on armor geekdon so this is the chief saying catch you down the road <laughs>